I'm sick of exotics being bad. Let's change that. Picture a world where all exotics are good. That'd be crazy, right? What would it take to make all exotics as good as Starfire Protocol, pre-nerf Heart of Inmost Light, or even Stompies? We are here to answer that question today, because I am not a fan of nerfs. Hello darkness, my old friend. I'd rather they buff everything to the highest plateau than make everything as bad as the worst stuff. Strong exotics are just fun, and isn't that what video games are supposed to be about? Now there's three rules I have for an exotic. Number one, it must create a new way to play the game. It needs to be good in both PvE and PvP, or at least shines in one. A good example would be Stompies being absolutely meta in PvP for so long, and Starfire being ridiculous in PvE. Number three, it needs to be fun to use and powerful. With these three rules in mind, I am here to bring you the hunter buffs that you never knew you needed. First, we have Radiant Dance Machines. Literally, what are these boots in the game for? Now if you were around when these boots first dropped, you'd know they were nerfed into the ground because of how they used to work with Dynamo. Dynamo gives you a chunk of super energy for dodging near enemies. The thing that made the boots broken was the fact that each dodge activated Dynamo. It was absolutely ridiculous, but pretty funny. Another cool interaction was Winter Shroud. On Stasis, hunters can dodge to slow enemies. What was really cool about this with Radiant Dance Machines was you could dodge until enemies freeze and then shatter dive them. This was a really cool way to play the game that only existed for one week until the exotic was nerfed. Now the first buff I'd give Radiant Dance Machines would be to allow Dynamo to work twice while dodging. This way, it isn't as strong as before, but still quite good again. I'd also make it so that Winter Shroud works the entire time. The third buff that would make this exotic absolutely disgusting is combining it with the exotic The Bombardiers. The synergy on these would be absolutely disgusting. You'd just keep dodging around an enemy while also hitting them with multiple explosives. Absolutely nasty. Think of the potential. For stasis, you would once again be able to keep dodging until a group of enemies are frozen. Then the bombardier grenade would take care of them. The best part is, this would also be useful for higher HP enemies like unstoppable champions and barriers, since bombardier grenades also slow for enemies. You'd dodge which procs the slow, then Bombardier Grenade would also slow them and do damage, and the champion would be frozen or stunned. Then you'd Shatter Dive and continue dodging. This just seems like so much fun and also very powerful for various enemies. Finally, for Void, you could spam invisibility dodges while also dropping bombs on enemies safely. You'd realistically be able to clear out a room of adds while staying invis the entire time. Talk about a stealth bomber, bro. Another cool thing is while on Void, Bombardier Grenades suppress, meaning that it's anti-overload. Finally, thanks to our first buff, all of these classes would also take advantage of Dynamo, Grenader, and all mods that activate on dodging. I am confident that this buff would catapult the usage of this exotic to the top. It also fits all three of our rules, by creating a new playstyle, being very fun, and excelling in PvE. For the next buff, we have Blight Ranger, Raiju's Harness, and Raiden Flux. Now I don't know who at Bungie is in love with Arc Staff, but why do we have three different Arc Hunter super related exotics? This is absolutely ridiculous, especially because all of them are terrible. Hello darkness my old friend. As you can probably guess from our last exotic rework, we are going to start by combining all three of these. First off, Blight Ranger gives you increased damage for redirecting attacks with Arc Staff. Second, Raiju's Harness lets you deactivate Arc Staff, similar to Chaos Reach, which saves your super energy. It also makes super energy drain much slower while blocking. Finally, Raiden Flux gives you increased damage by spamming your light attack on Arc Staff and gives increased duration for kills. Combining all three of these makes your Arc Staff super generally more powerful, but they are just the framework and still not enough to be meta. After combining the three, we will still need some bots. First of all, by combining the three of these, we have created a weird situation where the exotic wants you to block, but also wants you to attack. We'll start by differentiating when you do which, so that it makes sense. We'll start by increasing the damage that redirecting an attack does. 
Redirecting will do 2x damage to major and bosses, and the same as it does now to red bar enemies. With this distinction, the super suddenly highly incentivizes to block on higher HP enemies and attack lower tier enemies. The second buff is while blocking, we gain increased super duration based on the amount of damage redirected. With this buff, we'd effectively be Ursa Furiosa Titan, except way better with much more diversity. With all of these buffs, we have made the exotic very strong, but only for the super. This slightly accomplishes our second goal of making it excel in PvE, and it definitely makes it more fun for our third goal, but it does not create a new gameplay loop. The final buff will bring everything together. All the best exotics have good neutral gain. The exotic cannot be completely useless while your super is down. For that reason, we will need the final buff, which gives you increased super energy for combination blow kills. This plays into the neutral game of Arc Hunter, combination blow spamming, but also gives it an end game, so you aren't just mindlessly meleeing. After about 8 combination blows, you will already have your super up. This might sound broken, but keep in mind that Doomfang Pauldron currently only requires 4 shield bashes to get its super up. I am convinced that this combination of buffs will make Blight Ranger, Raiju's Harness, and Raiden Flux quite powerful in PvE. That's gonna be it for today's exotics. I'd really like to know what you all think, so comment below. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. Really, the goal here is to entertain and create a discussion about what should be done, since we all know exotic armor is absolutely terrible and in dire need of buffs. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. I'll be making a ton more of these exotic buffs if this video does well. My goal is to get through every single exotic. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next Destiny 2 video. Peace.